Welcome to this worship on Christmas Sunday as we continue through the 12 days of Christmas that lead us right through to Epiphany. May the eternal truth be always on our hearts that the God who breathed this world into being, placed stars into the heavens, and designed a butterfly's wing is the God who entrusted his life to the care of ordinary people, who became vulnerable that we might know how strong is the power of love, a mystery so deep it's impossible to grasp, a mystery so beautiful it is impossible to ignore. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. We light the Christ candle today, for the light that was born in Bethlehem still shines in our world with beauty, with joy, and with peace. Our first hymn this morning is Voices United 82, A Light is Gleaming, 82. Jesus can help creation shine. 
standing in the light. Come share its gladness, God's radiant love is burning bright, living in the light. So let us live in the brightness God has given, and let us rise to see the Today, I'd like to read a story for you. And some of you who have been part of Christmas events, plays and pageants and musicals and so on, will perhaps have participated in this classic Why the Chimes Rang. There was once in a faraway country where few people have ever traveled a wonderful church. It stood on a high hill in the midst of a great city, and every Sunday, as well as on sacred days like Christmas, thousands of people climbed the hill to its great archways, looking like lines of ants all moving in the same direction. When you came to the building itself, you found stone columns and dark passages, and a grand entrance leading to the main room of the church. This room was so long that one standing at the doorway could scarcely see to the other end where the choir stood by the marble altar. In the farthest corner was the organ, and this organ was so loud that sometimes when it played, the people for miles around would close their shutters and prepare for a great thunderstorm. Altogether, no such church as this was ever seen before, especially when it was lighted up for some festival and crowded with people, young and old. But the strangest thing about the whole building was the wonderful chime of bells. At one corner of the church was a great gray tower with ivy growing over it as far as one could see. I say as far as one could see because the tower was quite great enough to fit the great church, and it rose so far into the sky that it was only in very fair weather that anyone claimed to be able to see the top. Even then, one could not be certain that it was in sight. Up and up and up climbed the stones and the ivy, and as the men who built the church had been dead for hundreds of years, everyone had forgotten how high the tower was supposed to be. Now. All the people knew that at the top of the tower was a chime of Christmas bells. They had hung there ever since the church had been built and were the most beautiful bells in the world. Some thought it was because a great musician had cast them and arranged them in their place. Others said it was because of the great height which reached up where the air was clearest and purest. However that might be, no one who had ever heard the chimes denied that they were the sweetest in the world. Some described them as sounding like angels far up in the sky, others as sounding like strange winds singing through the trees. But the fact was, that no one had heard them for years and years. There was an old man living not far from the church who said that his mother had spoken of hearing them when she was a little girl. 
And he was the only one who was sure of as much as that. They were Christmas chimes, you see, and were not meant to be played by people or on common days. It was the custom on Christmas Eve for all the people to bring the church to the church their offerings to the Christ child. And when the greatest and best offering was laid on the altar, there used to come, sounding through the music of the choir, the Christmas chimes far up in the tower. Some said that the wind rang them, and others that they were so high that the angels could set them swinging. But for many long years, they had never been heard. It was said that people had been growing less careful of their gifts for the Christ child, and that no offering was brought great enough to deserve the music of the chimes. Every Christmas Eve, the rich people still crowded to the altar, each one trying to bring some better gift than any other without giving anything that he wanted for himself. And the church was crowded with those who thought that perhaps the wonderful bells might be heard again. But although the service was splendid and the offerings plenty, only the roar of the wind could be heard far up in the stone tower. Our second hymn this morning is Voices United, number 70, the wonderful African-American spiritual Rise Up, Shepherd, and Follow, number 70 in Voices United. Now, a number of miles from the city, in a little country village where nothing could be seen of the great church but glimpses of the tower when the weather was fine, lived a boy named Pedro and his little brother. They knew very little about the Christmas chimes, but they had heard of the service in the church on Christmas Eve and had a secret plan which they often talked over when by themselves to go see the beautiful celebration. Nobody can guess, little brother, Pedro would say, all the fine things there are to see and hear. And I have even heard it said that the Christ child sometimes comes down to bless the service. What if we could see him? The day before Christmas was bitterly cold with a few lonely snowflakes flying in the air and a hard white crust on the ground. Sure enough, Pedro and little brother were able to slip quietly away early in the afternoon. And although the walking was hard in the frosty air, before nightfall they had trudged so far, hand in hand, that they saw the lights of the big city just ahead of them. Indeed, they were about to enter one of the great gates in the wall that surrounded it when they saw something dark on the snow near the path and stepped aside to look at it. <coughs> 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 
It was a poor woman who had just fallen outside the city, too sick and tired to get in where she might have found shelter. The soft snow made a, of a drift a sort of pillow for her, and she would soon be so sound asleep in the wintry air that no one could ever waken her again. All this Pedro saw in a moment, and he knelt down beside her and tried to rouse her, even tugging at her arm a little, as though he would have tried to carry her away. He turned her face toward him so that he could rub some of the snow on it, and when he had looked at her silently for a moment, he stood up again and said, It's no use, little brother. You will have to go on alone. Alone, cried little brother, and you not see the Christmas festival? No, said Pedro, and he could not keep back a bit of choking sound in his throat. See this poor woman? Her face looks like the Madonna in the chapel window, and she will freeze to death if nobody cares for her. Everyone has gone to the church now, but when you come back, you can bring someone to help her. I will rub her to keep from freezing and perhaps get her to eat the bun that is left in my pocket. <clears throat> but I cannot bear to leave you and go on alone, said little brother. Both of us need not miss the service, said Pedro, and it had better be I than you. You can easily find your way to the church, and you must see and hear everything twice, little brother, once for you and once for me. I'm sure the Christ child must know how he should love to come with you and worship him. And oh, if you get a chance, little brother, to slip up to the altar without getting in anyone's way, take this little silver piece of mine and lay it down for my offering when no one is looking. Do not forget where you have left me and forgive me for not going with you.
off to the city and winked hard to keep back the tears as he heard the crunching footsteps sounding farther and farther away in the twilight. It was pretty hard to lose the music and splendor of the Christmas celebration that he had been planning for so long and spend the time instead in that lonely place in the snow. The great church was a wonderful place that night. Everyone said that it had never looked so bright and beautiful before. When the organ played and the thousands of people sang, the walls shook with the sound. And little Pedro, away outside the city wall, felt the earth tremble around him. At the close of the service came the procession with the offerings to be laid on the altar. Rich men and great men marched proudly up to lay down their gifts to the Christ child. Some brought wonderful jewels, some baskets of gold so heavy that they could scarcely carry them down the aisle. A great writer laid down a book that he'd been making for years and years. And last of all, walked the king of the country hoping with all the rest to win for himself the chime of the Christmas bells. There was a great murmur through the church as the people saw the king take from his head the royal crown, all set with precious stones, and lay it gleaming on the altar as his offering to the holy child. Surely, everyone said, we shall hear the bells now for nothing like this has ever happened before. But still only the cold old wind was heard in the tower, and the people shook their heads, and some of them said, as they had before, that they never really believed the story of the chimes and doubted if they ever rang at all. Well, <clears throat> the procession was over, and the choir began the closing hymn. Suddenly, the organist stopped playing as though she'd been shut, and everyone looked at the old minister who was standing by the altar, holding up her hand for silence. Not a sound could be heard from anyone in the church, but as all the people strained their ears to listen, there came, softly but distinctly, swinging through the air, the sound of the chimes in the tower. So far away, and yet so clear the music seemed. So much sweeter were the notes than anything that had ever been heard before, rising and falling away up there in the sky, that the people in the church sat for a moment as still as though something held them all by the shoulders. Then they all stood up together and stared straight at the altar to see what great gift had awakened the long, silent bells. But all that the nearest of them saw was the childish figure of little brother, who had crept softly down the aisle 
when no one was looking and had laid Pedro's little piece of silver on the altar. The end. And so having heard a story of generosity of spirit, generosity of self, and generosity of wealth, we too are invited to make our gifts to the child. And who knows, if our gifts are good and true and pure and beautiful, we too may hear the chimes ring. The following prayer that I'm using for the prayers of the people is another gem that is part of the church worldwide and it was written by the beloved Pope John the 23rd, who made huge strides in ecumenism between various denominations of Christianity, but even the broader understanding of ecumenism between all people of faith. And so I would like to share with you this Christmas prayer of Pope John the 23rd. O oh, sweet child of Bethlehem, grant that we may share with all our hearts in this profound mystery of Christmas. Put into the hearts of men and women this peace for which they sometimes seek so desperately and which you alone can give to them. Help them to know one another better and to live as brothers and sisters, children of the same Father. Reveal to them also your beauty, holiness, and purity. Awaken in their hearts love and gratitude for your infinite goodness. Join them all together in your love and give us your heavenly peace. We offer these and all our prayers in the name of the child born in Bethlehem, who when he was grown, taught his disciples these words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 45 in Voices United, Joy is Now in Every Place. And before we begin singing that, I do want to thank Bob and Samantha Clark, a wonderful father-daughter combination, who have led us both in the anthem and in the hymns today. Their voices are a blessing on each one of us and I certainly thank them for this wonderful Christmas gift. Again, Voices United, 45, Joy is Now in Every Place. Holy Jesus, may the 
star that shines at night, making your poor table bright. Fill our hearts with love and light. Oh, hear us, bless us, holy Jesus. Through the new year, let it stay. For the commissioning today, I would like to share with you some words that come not from a pope or a priest, but from an astronaut. These words were written by Frank Borman, who was part of the 1968 Apollo 8 space mission. And so we say with him, Give us, O oh God, the vision which can see your love in the world in spite of human failure. Give us the faith to trust your goodness in spite of our ignorance and weakness. Give us the knowledge that we may continue to pray with understanding hearts and show us what each one of us can do to set forward the coming of the day of universal peace. As you go, go in peace, and may the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, and the Holy Spirit keep you. Now, and forevermore. Amen.